Google Ads using AdWords is one of the best ways to get consistent results with Shopify dropshipping. There's no denying, Google Ads is an incredible advertising platform where you can sell dropshipping products and potentially transition your entire Shopify store over to a brand but I definitely understand why so many people who dropship don't even consider it as an advertising outlet. Let's be honest, when you first sign up for Google Ads, the advertising platform is very intimidating. And I remember back when I first started using AdWords, it looked like a crazy maze that I would never figure out. But I'm happy to say that I was not only able to figure it out, I was actually able to develop some incredible advertising strategies that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a complete step-by-step -step understanding of how Google Ads actually work and how you can start using it to build your dropshipping business or any e-commerce business in general. Now before we get into this, if you're new to this channel and you want to learn more about this kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe and drop a like and let's get right into creating some Google Ads. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start right at the beginning just because it's so simple but I'm just going to take you through it real quick and this is where you're going to actually go ahead and create your ad account and then we'll go into creating the first ad. So what we would want to do is go and create a new Google Ads account. Now to do this, you will need a Google account, but that's easy enough to do, so I'll leave that to all of you. Now right in here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually start off by switching to expert mode. We wanna do this right off the bat because it's gonna give us all the different tools that we need to properly optimize our ads and get the best quality conversions. Once we do that, you'll have all of these different options for different sales objectives or just objectives in general, traffic, apps, sales, and leads. But what we're gonna do is we're not gonna actually use this because when we're using lower budgets or when we're first starting, we do want a little bit more control over our campaigns. So we're gonna create a campaign without a goals guidance. Now, once you get into here, you're gonna select your campaign type. And today we're gonna be creating an AdWords campaign. So it's gonna be the search campaign. Down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select website visit because of course we want people to go to our website. Now, if you're doing a brand or an actual store where you're trying to just get traffic to your store, in this section right here, of course, you would just put the link to your homepage. But if you're trying to run traffic to a specific product page, you wanna make sure that in this section, you actually put the link to your product page. Then down here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna name our campaign. And typically the way that I like to name the campaign is including the information that's gonna be inside that actual campaign. So this is gonna be a pet anxiety bed or a dog bed. So I would do like a dog bed, and then this is gonna be cold targeting, and we're gonna be doing keywords. And then we're gonna do top of funnel. So this is gonna be TOF. And then I typically put in the break even ROAS of the product, which let's just say it's gonna be about 1.7. Now you can look up break even ROAS to figure out what that is, but it's something you should always include when you're marketing one specific product. If you're not doing one specific product and you're just running it to your homepage or to a catalog, in here you'd wanna put the budget of your campaign. So then that way you know what the actual budget is right by looking at the title. Then we'll just go ahead and hit continue. Then in here where it says campaign, we'll just go ahead and we'll paste in that exact same information and then down here under networks you'll see there's these two options these are beyond just the traditional advertising placement which if you look up a keyword let's say you're trying to rank for dog bed this is the type of ad that we're going to be creating so it's the actual ad for the keyword and this is where the placement would be even if we don't select these so search network we'll turn it off display network we'll turn it off because we don't want those down in show more, you're gonna see we can actually set up our start and end date. Typically, I recommend starting your ads a couple days after you actually create them because there is potential that they might linger in review for a couple days. So the last thing you want is them starting at the wrong date or the wrong time. For these three down here, we're just gonna leave them the way that they are and then we'll come into target location. Now, this comes down to wherever you wanna target, but typically when I'm running Google ads, I always try to run them to one country. I don't like to spread it across Across too many different countries because I find it just doesn't perform as well and generally when I'm selling products I always just target the US so what we would do is we would enter location manually and we're just gonna type in the United States once you find it you just go ahead and hit target and this down here is really important we want to make sure that we select presence people in or regularly in your target location and then for the exclude we'll leave it as presence people in your excluded location this will make it so that it only targets people that are actually in the US 
Down here for language, we'll just make it the language of the customers, which will be English. And then for audience segment, we don't have any audiences created yet. So we're just gonna leave this because we're just creating the initial campaigns. Down here for the budget, you're gonna see this is your daily budget for the campaign. So it's not for specific ad groups, it's for the entire campaign. And we're gonna have several ad groups in this campaign. So we wanna make sure that it has a good amount of budget that we can spread across those ad groups. Now, when it comes to the campaign, I would generally say a $50 minimum for the campaign. But typically what I would do is anywhere around $100 to $150 to start out, but $50 minimum is just a good amount to let that campaign kind of breathe a bit. Now, when we come down here to the bidding strategy, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually click into the select the bidding strategy. And then this will give us more options when it comes to how we're gonna select our bids. So we'll go ahead and we'll click into here and we're gonna actually click on manual CPC. So this stands for manual cost per click. And the reason why we do this is because we're doing lower budgets. So we wanna be able to manage our ads more and not let Google optimize them as much because we're gonna manually optimize them from the start. Now under the show more settings, you can just leave these the way that they are you don't actually need to change anything there and then when we come down here add extensions now you'll see here they say exactly what this will do so it can get you a 15% higher click-through rate just by showing these site link extensions so this is something that we definitely want to add in and the reason for that is because if we come over here and look at these ads you'll see that that's actually what these things are down here so not too many people will actually click on these but as you'll see it makes the ad look a lot beefier like it really makes it stand out in comparison to other ones like this that don't have them these ones that have the site link extensions actually are bigger and it just gives people more things to click on where you can actually add some more keywords too so back over here you'll see that there's a couple different ones that we can do but we're going to actually only do site link extensions so once you come into site link extensions this is where you're going to want to start implementing some keywords or some sales words that would get people clicking so in here you can add quite a few so we've got 50 percent off we've got best dog bed for big dog free shipping and easily washable soft material now of course you would want to go through and make sure that you're actually using keywords that you've done the research on that have a good search volume for your product but I'm just throwing these in just so that you have the example and then you put the final URL which of course is going to be your product page and then you can go ahead and hit save now these are going to be added to every single ad group so you do want to make sure that they're fully optimized before you continue once we have that all set up, we'll go ahead and we'll hit save and continue. Now on this next page, this is actually gonna bring us to our ad group page. So the ad groups are gonna be inside the campaign and generally I'm gonna to try to create 10 different ad groups within the one campaign. Now, if you wanna add more than 10, you would wanna increase your budget because a $50 budget, if you're doing the minimum, anything beyond 10 ad groups will just not optimize correctly because your budget's gonna be spread across too many ad groups. So in here for the ad group, what I'll typically do is I'll name the ad group, whatever the keyword is that I'm going to be targeting. And then we'd go ahead and we'd put in our default bid. So this is how much we're going to actually pay for each click when someone clicks on our ad. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you're going to want to put it a little bit higher at the beginning because until Google starts seeing some traffic, they're not going to really know how to optimize your ads and they're also not going to really know how well you're performing. So you just need to set it a little bit higher so that it will actually spend. So traditionally, I would probably do anywhere around 90 cents, but from the start, we'll probably do $1.10. Now, when it comes to the keywords, this is where you're going to obviously want to use your keyword research because you want to make sure you're using long tail keywords and fully optimized keywords that are specific to your product but if you happen to not have any you can just go ahead and put the domain of your product page in here and Google will actually generate quite a few different options that they actually think will perform well I don't generally recommend using this though I do think you should do your own keyword research but just for the case of this we'll go ahead and we'll use calming dog bed now once we have our keyword which is calming dog bed we want to make sure that we're actually going through and optimizing it for different match types so you'll see down here there's three different match types that you can actually optimize for so from the start what we want to do is we want to actually make sure that our ad so our keyword is optimized for all three different match types so to do this you can just go to a website called AdWords wrapper and once you get to this website what you're gonna do is scroll all the way down and in here you'll just go ahead and you'll paste your keyword and then hit wrap keywords 
Now, after you wrap your keywords, you'll see it will do all these different types of setups. But what we actually want to do is we want to get broad phrase and exact match. So we'll go ahead and we'll copy all three of these and then we'll go back over to our ad and we'll paste it in here. So now for this ad group, we're going to be optimizing for the keyword calming dog bed, but we're going to be optimizing that keyword targeting or match type as broad phrase and exact match. And if you want to learn what each of these means, you can just go ahead and click learn more. Now what you would do is you'd scroll down here and you'd create another ad group for a different keyword and we're gonna to continue to do this for 10 different keywords. So to do this, all you need to do is click new ad group and then it will create a new one. And as you can see, now we have four all together, but you'd wanna go through and do this exact same step with each keyword. So the next one that you do might be like best pet bed or something like that. And then you'd wanna go and make sure that you actually do the AdWords wrapping so that you have it all set up, paste that in here. And then you'd go ahead, set the default bid for this one, add your link to your product page, and then you keep doing that for each each ad group until you have 10 all together. Now, once we have 10 all set up, we'll just hit save and continue. Now in this section, this is the create ad section. So this is where we're going to actually be creating the ad that people are going to see when they do the search for our product. So what we would want to do is actually set this up individually for each keyword that we have. So you'll notice that in here I have two and that's because I added two ad groups in the past stage. So instead of doing 10, I just did two to make it faster. So that means that once you get to this stage, you should have 10 different setups that you're gonna need to go through and do. Now, when it comes to setting these up, we're gonna optimize these specifically to the keyword to make sure that we have different keywords associated with that keyword piled into here. So we make sure that we have our final URL link as our actual product page, but if if our URL link is long like this, what we can actually do is take the main keyword that we're optimizing this ad group for, which is calming dog bed, and we're going to change the display URL to that exactly. Now, this won't change your actual URL, so you don't have to worry about that. It's just going to optimize the listing a little bit more. Now, as we come down here, what we're going to do is we're going to optimize it just like Google says you're supposed to be doing right here. And we're going to do that by doing these different headlines, which are these blue text right here. Now we'll get rid of all of these. Now what we want to do is we want to make sure that the first one is definitely the keyword that we're optimizing this ad group for. So the first one will make it calming dog bed. And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually pin this as the first position. Now it's important to pin that one as the first position because anyone searching for calming dog bed, we want to make sure that the first word inside of our ad is exactly what they're searching for. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add a couple more in here. Here. Now with these, generally what I would recommend you do is put three minimum and then anything beyond that is completely up to you. But basically what Google's going to do, you can kind of see it doing it over here, is any of the ones that aren't pinned like this first one, it's going to actually randomly assort them and shift them around like it's doing right here and try to optimize the listing as best as possible based on whatever one performs the best. So that's why adding more can be beneficial, but I always recommend three minimum and then to get some recommendations you can actually look up here and potentially some of these will be good but generally what I'm trying to do is add in the main keyword and then something that actually supports the main keyword so it relieves pet stress and anxiety and then some type of like a special offer I always like to include too so 50% off limited time free shipping something like that then when we come down here, you're gonna see we have our actual description. All right, so in this section, what I typically like to do is add some kind of numbers, just because I find numbers tend to draw the viewer's attention to the actual ad, so I try to add that in there. Then what we'd wanna do is we'd wanna actually try to include our main keyword down here again, so calming dog bed. You'll notice I put it right there, so calming dog bed. So we wanna actually kind of keyword stuff just a little bit, but not excessively, but we do want the ad to have that keyword appearing in a couple different sections. So now as you'll see, we have our actual ad with all of the different information in there. And the same thing you can do down here, let's say you wanna make sure that this appears as the first text only, you can go ahead and you can actually pin that as position one and then if you add more descriptions you can have them alternating generally I wouldn't recommend pinning more than one I would just recommend that if you really want to have that first one appearing which typically you do you'll pin the first one and then just let the other ones kind of shift and shuffle for 
whatever Google thinks is actually going to work best. Now, once we've completed that, of course, we need to go through and we need to make sure we do the exact same thing for the rest of these ad groups. So this one's dog pillow. So we need to go through, do all the exact same setup for dog pillow. And you'd scroll down and you do it again and again and again until each one is fully optimized in that exact same way, utilizing the main keyword throughout the entire ad itself. Then once you've gone ahead and you've completed all of that, we'll go ahead and we'll hit save and continue. Now, if you're first starting out with Google ads, once you get to this section, you're going to actually have to go ahead and input your billing information because you're actually in the process of setting up your ad account. But if you're not in the process of setting up your ad account, it's going to take you to a completely different page, which I'll show you right now. All right. Now, if you did have a new account, of course, you'd set up all your billing information and then it would take you to this page. If you didn't, it would just take you straight to this page. So what it will do is it will show you an example of your ad. If everything looks all good, all you need to do is hit save and continue. Then in here, it's going to show you your entire campaign breakdown. Again, just quickly go through and actually review everything, make sure that it all looks good. And then you go ahead and you hit that publish button. Now, once you've got your ads all set up, there's one very important thing that you need to do to ensure you're getting the best cost per click and also the best chances of actually finding success with Google ads. And that's fully optimizing your listings. I've got a challenge for you. Since you've made it this far, why not like this video and hit subscribe in the next five seconds because I upload four new e-commerce videos every week. And if you're curious about what my life looks like in real life, go to my Instagram at Jonathan Molendyke and tap that follow button to find out. Now to fully optimize your listings, one of the easiest ways is getting this app from the Shopify app store called Feed for Google Shopping. Now this is basically something that's just going to communicate with the Google Merchant Center, which will really help you out with optimizing shopping ads, but it will actually also help you optimize out your keyword ads too. So what it will do is it will actually sync all of the information from your store over to Merchant Center, which communicates with your Google ads. Now, the great thing about this app is you can actually input different keywords into your product description, into your product title without actually altering your product description and your product title. Cause this is just going to be the information that it's going to actually share with Google, but it doesn't have to be the exact information that's actually on your product page. Now this is so incredibly powerful because if you're trying to put a bunch of optimized keywords into your listing page, chances are it's not going to be fully optimized for conversions because adding all these different keywords, the wording might not be the best and it might not look the best. So this just gives you a great opportunity to go ahead and put in that information without actually affecting your entire listing page. So I hope you really enjoyed this and I'll see you all in the next video. If you struggle with drop shipping product research and just can't find that winning product, last week's video is the best content I have made so far on how to do just that. Giving a unique live experience where you get to see me do drop shipping product research and find winning products with you watching.